Imagine you're in a schoolyard and the phys ed teacher approaches with what you recognize in his arms as a football. And then he says, I need 20 few, 22 of you uh, boys to gather together and we're going to do a demonstration. And then he gives some very basic instructions. Keep your head up, bend your knees. And by the way, the first one who goes through the goal line wins a try. Then you realize this is somewhat similar to what you've done before, but this is not football. You've learned that he is teaching you how to play rugby. Something similar to what you've played before, but something entirely new. And so he's just giving you some very basic, essential instructions so you can begin the game. And this is much the way Jesus approaches the disciples when he gives them the Beatitudes, which is essentially a new law. We know it's a new law because the words that are used to describe him ascending the mountain are very similar to the words ascending Mount Sinai. Yet when Moses ascended Mount Sinai, he received the law. Here Jesus is giving a law, not to do away with the previous law, but to give a new way of living, which is similar to what came before, uh, but yet has a new orientation. And so essentially what he's doing is he's giving an entirely new identity to those who are there. Yes, to the disciples who are there, because as the passage tells us, they're the ones who gathered around him. And it says he, he sat down and the disciples came to him. But the context, there are multitudes around him. So there are others who are in his hearing. So he's proclaiming all who would be disciples. Here is the way to live. Now, the law, of course, was the primary identity of the people of old, as Moses said to the people in Deuteronomy, I'm reading from 4.8 here, and what great nation is there that has statutes and rules so righteous as this law that I set before you today? Now, Jesus here, and just giving this initial instruction, isn't, isn't telling them everything about the new kingdom that he's about to establish. That will be unfolded throughout all the Gospels. But like introducing students to a new game in the, in the schoolyard, he's giving them the most basic essentials so they can be attentive to what is to follow, to what will unfold, that they will learn to understand. Now, what's clear as we look at the Beatitudes, these blessings that he, he says, this, in which, in which the format in which he gives this, this, this new way of living, it's not for everyone, although it may seem that way at first, after all, includes in verse 11 with great specificity about what this looks like. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. So these are specific words that are given for those who are ready to follow him. And so it's like finally telling people who have learned to play rugby, now, those who play this game are the ones who will lose teeth and will get bloody. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and we'll have, you know, we'll be so proud of this that you'll put bumper stickers in your car to, 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 uh, to boast of the same. Well, that's how it can seem when we have a new identity. Just like many people, when they join a sport and they finally uh, get involved, then they, they feel a sense of inclusion. They feel elite in a certain way. <laughs> You know, like, you remember in school, those who wore the, the well, those who are uh, a little bit older, not so much today, wore the varsity jackets, or, you know, those who are on a team will wear something that marks them apart. Um, and in many ways, that's what the law did, was form an identity of God's people. And, but the question might raise, be raising in, may, might be arising in your minds, is, well, gee, I mean, this, those who, this is how we're supposed to live, to be marked out, to follow Jesus. If it hasn't, uh, it, do I live this way? Is this something that I'm able to walk in, uh, to be able to endure this kind of persecution? Um, am I somebody who really embodies this kind of, of identity the, the way we live? 
After all, the law was primarily an identity marked out by a lifestyle, and Jesus is giving a new lifestyle here. Do we live this? Uh, can, can we uh, live in such a way that we can claim that we're able to, you know, play rugby, give blood? <laughs> um, is, does that mark your life? Do we really have this identity? Well, understand that the law was given in such a way not that it was lived perfectly, but it was like a fence around those who had it. We have received this blessing, we received this way of living, and it identifies us as a people. That was for the people of the Old Testament. All right, now, no one kept this law perfectly, which is why they had the sacrifices. No one was a perfect keeper of the law. But because they had it, because they endeavored to live it, that's what marked them out. And so as we look at this uh, new law that was given, we see that it's even more stringent than was given to Israel. Um, as that final verse makes clear, those who are willing to endure persecution for the sake of Jesus. Yes, those who are able to embrace mourning, uh, those who are able to be meek, those who are able to embrace poverty, uh, but above all, this is something that goes beyond what anybody is able to fulfill. And so, yes, there is this identity that puts a, a fence around us, a marker, a badge of identity. But none of us are able to keep it, even less so than those who are able to keep the Old Testament law. But if we look closely at this passage, as we widen the lens, as this, this way of living is unfolded for us throughout the gospel, what we see is that it describes the life of Jesus. In the Gospel of Matthew, we see that he is the one that Matthew describes as, as being meek. We see that Jesus is the one who is described as being merciful. Jesus is the one who was persecuted. So what is happening here? Yes, there is a fence of identity that marks out God's people. But ultimately, the only one, yes, and, and well, let's just say this, that fence is made smaller. Uh, uh, as he gives this new law, it's even more exclusive than the Old Testament law. But it's so exclusive that the only one who is able to live inside that fence ultimately is Christ. He's, he's the only worthy player of rugby who is able to give blood the way we think it ought to be done. He's the only one, ultimately, who is able to live these truths out, which lead to the cross. Which brings us to the whole idea of what it means to be blessed. It's, to be blessed is not a state of feeling, of happiness, in the sense that, yes, I am able to fulfill things, and I feel worthy because of this. To be blessed is a state of being, of who you are, which moves us ultimately to the way St. Paul embraces this reality of Christ, which is that our identity is not so much in what we do, but who we are in Christ. As he speaks to the Corinthians, in Christ Jesus, he has become to us wisdom from God, righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. So that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. So none of us have the privilege of being able to say, yes, I know rugby now. <laughs> I am on the team. I've got the jacket with the logo on the back. No. We are those who humbly acknowledge that only Jesus is the one who is worthy to wear that jacket. But our identity is in him, which is the essential element of our conversion about what it means to take on the identity of Christ, what it means to embrace our baptism and to be able to live truly as Christians. But this is something that's very hard to sustain, um, even as Often we long to have that identity that marks us apart, that the, the, the varsity jacket, so to speak. And I could say, even from experience, 
a learning a sport for myself. Uh, some of you know that I've been a competitive cyclist, and in those days, when, especially when I was racing in road racing, uh, when you're going over 30 miles per hour, elbow to elbow, uh, with people in a pack, it takes a long time before that. And I found myself, as a Christian, as even after I'd become a priest, feeling this sense of, of exclusivity by simply being a competitive cyclist. You know, much on things to come, heaven to come. For in the old law, where heaven wasn't, if you read the Old Testament, heaven wasn't such a clear reality as we have in the new. Uh, the idea of the blessing that was sought after by following the law was in this life and for one's progeny. Uh, being able to leave a heritage uh, in this visible kingdom on earth. But here, Jesus is saying that ultimately, we are looking for a heavenly reward. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Yes, on earth, but ultimately from a heavenly perspective. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And so it's through this heavenly reality, holding on to that reality, that resurrection reality that is to come, that we're able to finally live out what it means to be in Christ. As Pope Benedict XVI said, saints ultimately are the ones who become the true interpreters of Holy Scripture. He says that the meaning of Scripture is something that they live so intently, something that they trust in so thoroughly that they grow towards the good that is to come and that the heavenly reality, he says, is made present in their very lives. So ultimately, if our identity is in Christ, then our identity is where he will ultimately bring us in the very end, where nothing but righteousness reigns. We're able to hold on to that, hunger for that, thirst after that, then it becomes a present reality in our lives. This is the only thing worth boasting for. This is the only thing worth ultimately valuing because it's the only thing that will really matter in the end. So as we prepare to come to receive the Eucharist today, as we prepare to enter in truly into the heavens sacramentally, let us think about those identities that we take on that are passing things. And let us shift our primary identity to what will not be taken away. And then we'll be truly be able to live out this reality, to truly be able to, to play the game according to the guidelines that our Lord Jesus Christ